So now I have the honor of presenting our two presenters. Michelle Bolton has a freelance business where she leads a team of experienced professionals to offer services from editing to design and layout. She is a founding member of Editor Saskatchewan, where she held many branch executive positions. She is also a past president of Editors Canada, and she's co-chair of the Standards Task Force. Moira Rayner White has decades of experience editing, proofreading, writing, teaching, and managing projects across Canada and beyond for government and corporate clients. She is a past president of Editors Canada, as well as former chair of Editors Ottawa Gatineau. Together with Michelle Bolton, she co-chaired the Standards Task Force. And so I'd like to turn this presentation over to Moira and Michelle. Uh, hello everybody, welcome and thanks so much for attending. Today we're going to briefly go through um, the changes to professional editorial standards, starting by asking what is PES? PES is a publication of Editors Canada that outlines the standards that professional editors should, editors, I'm sorry, should be expected to reach. It's really a gold star um, of standards. It's based on best practices, and we'll go through the review of them. Michelle. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about the process we, uh, we took on when we started this. Um, when these standards were last um, really overhauled was in 2007, eight, and they were released in 2009. And at that point, it was a really major shakeup of the standards, and that had all kinds of ripple implications for uh, our publications, for our certification program. All kinds of things were, were affected by that, and it took kind of several years before everything kind of caught up. So the association didn't want to have a big overall like that, again, that would be um, such a significant, uh, have such a significant impact on the association. So instead they committed in 2009 to having a review done every five years. And that way they were hoping that we wouldn't see large scale changes to the standards all at once, but instead we would uh, kind of roll through minor revisions and updates every five years. So when we started this process, um, as chairs, Moira and I, in 2015, we were actually a couple of years behind schedule. A number of things had happened to derail the process until that point, so we felt we were kind of under the gun to get things going uh, as quickly as possible. So one of the first things we did was pull together a team of really um, either highly experienced or somehow having um, significant uh, experience that would contribute to this review. So we wanted people with different perspectives and uh, we wanted to be frugal. So we wanted to go to one location and we found that in Vancouver, we had a huge repository of people with great experience for us. So we pulled together a group of nine editors at the end of 2015 who came together for a weekend. And just to give you a sense of who these people were. We had uh, new and uh, seasoned editors. We had people who worked both in-house and freelance. We had people working in academics, publishing, government, corporate, and new media. Uh, we had one CPE. We had two honorary CPEs in the room. We had uh, three of those editors had at least one certification designation. Uh, five had worked on the certification steering committee. Five were teachers of editing and proofreading. Uh, three were former presidents of our association, and two were Tom Fairley Award winners. So we felt pretty good about the group that we brought together. Now, um, after that, uh, we came away with a work plan, and we went looking for contributors to work on the task force. And uh, so we were lucky to get a really great team. We had Nancy Flight and uh, Don Osterhoff and Berna Ozenal who joined Moira and I and helped with the process. The biggest um, decision for us was when we were discouraged to do a survey as they had done uh, for the 2009 release to get feedback from members about um, the standards. So we went looking for some new process by which we could get feedback and, and work together. And um, the, the idea of working by Google Docs was proposed and it worked really, really well. 
And uh, so that was basically what we did. Though many of you probably participated in the, the Google Docs editing that we, we did as a group. Uh, once that was done, we uh, went out and looked at some of the standards that other organizations have and compared them to our own and started meeting once a week with the task force to go through the proposed changes or the um, comments that we'd received back. Um, we also took this out to non-members and asked for feedback from some people who had, we solicited specific non-members who had um, experience or came from um, professions or backgrounds that we wanted to specifically get some feedback from. Once that was all done, uh, of course, we, we submitted this to all of you and um, in, in October of 2016, we got approval of, of this review and uh, here we are. Um, so next we'd like to talk about who uses uh, PES. And they're basically used by, primarily used by editors, by Editors Canada, by those hiring editors, and by teachers and trainers of editors. So first of all, as an editor, what you need to know is what changes have been made to these standards versus the old standards. Um, as an editor, I can use PES to guide my professional development. And anybody who takes a certification exam, anybody who even practices for a certification exam, using the standards is uh, doing professional development. You can use them to expand editing skills. By this I mean that if you um, are reading through the standards and you see some that you're not familiar with, and you want to become acquainted with those, it, uh, PES provides a great uh, stepping board to do this. Also, while reading through them, some of you may recognize that you already do those skills in the other areas, but hadn't thought of becoming certified in those areas or hadn't thought of advertising your skills in those areas. So by all means, use these to expand your editing skills. Um, I use them, and I know many other editors do, to explain what editing is and what editors do. I explain this to clients constantly, and I use these standards as a basis for that. And lastly, but certainly not leastly, you can use them to prepare for certification. Um, Michelle. Okay, um, our association, of course, for our association, this is a really uh, pivotal document. Um, it uh, has implications for many, many things that the association does. Uh, maybe primarily, you know, one of the first and foremost important things is to define what it is that we do as editors and uh, explain to the, the rest of the world what, what we're doing and the value of what we're doing. Um, it's used to um, uh, develop pr products and services for, us, for our members. Um, it's, it's part of how we define our conferences, our webinars, uh, the seminars that, eat, that are offered at the branch level. Um, it is uh, an important document for our meeting professional editorial standards, our editing Canadian English, and of course our certification program and the certification uh, pre preparation manuals um, all use uh, these standards to define the work that they do. So uh, ultimately it is how we define who we are and what is expected of, of editors in our profession. So it's a really important document for many, many aspects of the association. Um, <clears throat> as people who hire editors, uh, I'm sure all of you know that or have realized that often people who are hiring editors don't have a clear idea of what it is they're looking for. They know they need an editor, but they don't know exactly what it is that they want from an editor or what an editor should be doing. So this is a, a good way for those who are looking to hire editors to determine what skills will be needed what level of edit they're looking for, and to help them define the scope of a, a project and, uh, and put that out and get the help that they really need. Or also you know, to understand the limitations of what an editor can do for them, because oftentimes that's misunderstood as well. So we think it's a really important document for those who hire editors as well as those who are editors. And I certainly use them a fair bit to help write uh, statements of work. This is what I will cover under this part of an edit. And if you want anything more, if there's any scope creep beyond that, then we'd better talk about expanding the statement of work. 
Mm -hmm. um, I also train editors, so I can use, and I do use uh, professional editorial standards to prepare and mark teaching material for seminars and editing courses. And I think, I think Michelle would join me in this. This was one of the more interesting things that came out of that first meeting in Vancouver was how every one of the younger editors around that table had said, no, 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 we're very familiar with PES and we use them to make sure that we could pass certification exams, we could pass um, the university editing courses we took. So it's not only for the teachers, but it's for the students as well. It, it works really well to set a, a, a basis for them. Yeah, and actually they often had a different perspective from the teachers about what was valuable in each of the standards as we were going through them. So that was kind of enlightening for us. Michelle. Okay, what kind of changes have we seen? Um, as we said, we were, we were kind of hoping going in that we weren't going to see, see large scale overhauls here. Uh, although we were prepared for anything, we threw it out to, to members and non-members and started to, to look for what sort of feedback we were getting. How are they working for people? Um, so largely, I think the, the, the biggest theme here is that they're, the standards themselves are not largely changed. What we found is when there were people who maybe said they couldn't see themselves or what they do in the standards, it wasn't so much about how the standards themselves or the, you know, the, the core of what it is that editors do. Uh, it's not that that had changed. We needed to look at the standards and, in context and try to help people see themselves in the standards to see where they apply to how um, editors work in different ways, especially as technology has infil infil sorry, infiltrated our profession. So ultimately what we've seen is some, some of the material has been reorganized to be clearer, to be... Um, um, sorry, um, we've also looked a lot at the examples that were given, and that's one of the things that we've changed quite a bit. I don't think we're going to go through any of those today, but if you look at the examples provided with each of the standards, you will find that a lot of them have been updated to um, give a different perspective on what each, how these uh, standards can be applied or who might use them. Uh, ultimately, some standards have been changed, and we've added a few new ones as well. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now is we're just going to quickly, very quickly go through the standards to look at the five different areas and just highlight what's been changed. So Michelle, you're going to start here. Okay, I'm going to start with the fundamentals. Um, now this is kind of the core standard that applies to, or an umbrella standard that applies to all of the other standards as well. So in addition to, let's say, you know, in a copy editing, you would also need to have a really broad uh, understanding of the fundamentals and uh, so there were not huge changes here um, one of the changes at the introduction level is um, we, we've separated all of the standards were already separated into knowledge and practice but there seemed to be some confusion about where people perceive to there to be overlap there or, or redundancy so in the introduction, we clarified uh, how we define the difference between knowledge and practice and why these aren't necessarily uh, a redundancy, but actually would be applied differently. Um, there was one new standard, 11, A11.1, and that was to ensure that everyone on the team is aware of the appropriate level of intervention for the edit, and that's kind of about making sure everyone's on the same page. Uh, some of the changes here, uh, A6.1, we added um, accessibility in print and electronic media. Um, you will see how kind of a theme throughout is we changed a little bit how we talked about digital documents because in the old standards, really, we were talking about a much more limited scope of terms of yeah, digital documents than we're working with today. Um, a8.1, we've added use editorial judgment when deciding whether to intervene, leave as is, query, change, or recommend a change. Uh, A10, changed editing tools to editing resources. A10.2, we've added in software. And A10.3, we've added and databases. So these were just things, again, to expand or clarify um, the standards. 
Okay, so for structural editing, there were not too many changes. Uh, we did add two new standards, however. So B3, we added, if necessary, recommend headings and navigation aids to clarify or highlight organizational material. And B4, recommend or implement the most effective positioning of auxiliary textual material. Um, and that was it. For stylist, other than minor changes. For stylistic editing, there were a few more. We actually reorganized the, um, the structure of it to add an explanation to the preamble and explain what a stylistic edit is, when a stylistic edit is performed. And we had a great deal of discussion about this. Um, because stylistic editing, or the definition of it, seems to be unique to Canada, there were some people that wanted to make it applicable to other editing associations around the world. And in the end, we decided to keep it as is. Um, we changed the category flow to coherence and flow, and we have only one new standard here, and that's with C1 to improve paragraph construction to more effectively convey meaning. We would had one about sentence construction, but nothing specific about paragraph construction. We had a number of changes, for example, C4, we changed rewrite, which uh, some people um, uh, did not like. They said revise is much uh, gentler. And then we combined two standards from the 29 uh, version under C9, and we made some changes into in C11 to establish, maintain, or enhance tone, mood, style, and authorial voice or letter of formality. And examples were making text more engaging or entertaining. Copy editing. Okay, copy editing. <clears throat> um, there was a little bit of reorganization in copy editing. Um, we changed the structure to have five categories instead of four. Um, and we did this because there was some sense that we needed to take apart accuracy and completeness. There was some sense that those things really weren't the same thing. And uh, so we believe this is better. Uh, so there was that kind of general restructuring. Uh, one new standard was added, D6, review visual materials and organizational information to ensure they are accurate and correct or query as required. Um, changes were D5, uh, we added historical details, narrative timelines to the examples, and in D11, uh, changed the wording to include arbitrary and confusing shifts and variations in terminology, logic, and mechanics. And last but not least, the standards for proofreading. There were two new standards. And E6, the minute somebody brought that up, and that was brought up at the Vancouver meeting, we all went, but of course, that makes sense, to whenever possible, proofread the material in its intended medium. And E7, we added understand English spelling, grammar, and punctuation, and correct errors within the limits of the proofreading role. Um, and we also amalgamated two others into one. So that's our brief rush through now. Um, I'd like to ask if there are any questions. I see none yet, Moira. I see none yet either. If you have any questions, just click on the Q&A icon. That will open a box where you can type in your question. Comments, questions? We were told to make this very brief so we would leave time uh -huh. for questions. So, uh, so Moira, know, maybe you can tell us what's the next step for the standards? Well, the next step is that the standards really uh, remain the same for about five years. So in about another four years, there should be a panel um, or a task force convened again by the National Executive Council to look at the standards. <laughs> and start a process exactly like this. One thing we didn't mention that we should have, of course, is that there are separate French standards. And Sandra was, um, Sandra Gravel was invited to be part of this today, but she felt that we'd be talking to two different audiences, which makes sense to me. Um, but they were similarly updated at some point. Um, I can go through to contact information. Of course, the standards are a free download on the association website. And Michelle and I, our email addresses will be attached to the slideshow that goes with this. And if you have any questions, um, please feel free. I see. And 
And I'd like to remind everyone that you will receive an email from Editors Canada with a link to these slides. And also we'll let you know when the, um, when the YouTube is, uh, when it's posted to YouTube or figure that it will be probably within a week's time. Uh, okay. I see we have another question. Yeah, we have two questions here. Yes. Uh, uh, Sherry Hinman, very interesting webinar. Can you speak a little bit more about how this will be incorporated into the certification process? Um, yes, we can. Uh, and the certification committee, we should have mentioned, was involved at every step as well. Whenever we put together the you know, first version and the second ver version, we shared them with the certification committee because, of course, they were concerned, it was concerned that there may be a lot of changes. And as Michelle said, we didn't, we, we changed it we didn't make major changes because people were asking us not to make major changes. That's too many negatives. That's confusing. But they were done. The, the reorganization in 2009 was so good that they didn't really require tremendous changes. What needed changing was the updated examples, etc. So all those changes have to be reflected in the certification exams. And for example, I was party um, a few weeks ago to for this year, and we were asked to address um, certain standards that had not been answered before, so that, or had not been addressed before. So we made sure that in the certification exam that I was part of setting, that we took the new standards and made sure at least a couple of questions in those exams um, answered those questions. And certification will always be going back and forth with the um, standards committee because that's everything, every question is based on a um, standard in it. And Sherry, is that fine? Did I answer that? Um, okay, I'll go on to question number two. Uh, Jennifer Ralston asks, since you've mentioned a French version, are they downloadable as well? Yes, they are. They're on the French side of the website and they are downloadable. And this is actually interesting because it's my understanding that the way back when, when the standards were first put together, they were actually first put together in French. And then the English side of the association decided they needed uh, standards. And I think that's about okay. all. Okay, good. Okay, a couple more questions now. Um, for editors not working in publishing houses, for example, what is the best way to learn the fundamentals? Can you recommend a course? Um, I've, uh, the fundamentals of editing, and I've never worked in a publishing course, so I've learned them through taking courses. I, and this is not meant to be just an advertisement for Ryerson, but I have taken a lot of the Ryerson, I took many of the Ryerson courses like when they first came out. Um, and I now teach uh, one course a year for them. So this is, uh, you know, that's a, um, a caveat there. I, this is not meant to be an advertisement for it, but I know that they have, certainly if you want to get their publishing certificate through Ryerson, you have to take some of their fundamentals of editing as well. And as well, I, uh, I read like the preamble to books like the Chicago Manual of Style cover a lot of the publishing process as well. Yes, and there are Queen's online courses as well. Ah, Sherry says she's developing the course for fundamentals. I know Queen's is, is putting together a whole bunch of new ones. Um, there's many in BC that our editors uh, take, I believe it's Royal Roads. I'm, I'm not actually not sure which one. I tend to do the Ontario one. So absolutely, there are lots of ways you can do it. Uh, Mount Royal in Calgary has a fantastic <coughs> program. Someone just uh, chimed in. Michelle, do you have anything to uh, add to that one? No, I don't think so. so Ultimately, yeah. I think it's, it's one of those things that infiltrates every aspect of editing. So um, it's kind of hard maybe to pull out something that only addresses the fundamentals. But again, as, as you, you know, take professional development, as you take courses, as you work more in different areas, all of this comes into play. But I found actually the intro to like Chicago Manual Style's got some great stuff. And the fundamentals of editing also include scheduling, some project management, etc. All right, we have, yes. Uh, Simon Fraser, of course, of course. Um, yes. Simon Fraser does have a great program and I knew that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. We should have had that list up with us. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And um, Sherry's adding that uh, the Queen's courses are being written specifically to prepare for the Editors Canada tests. And I heard that from someone else. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I think on that note, uh, Moira and Michelle, we'd like to thank you very much for telling us about the new standards today. And uh, we'd like to remind everyone that they can download these and they can also uh, get more information uh, by uh, visiting the website and also stay tuned for the YouTube um, broadcast of this session. So thank you both very much. And thanks, thanks to everyone for attending. Thanks, Trish. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm going to close out now. Okay, thanks.